Your little choices become habits that affect the bigger decisions you make in life. Elizabeth George. And the habits that we want you to develop here at ChartingWealth.com are practice trading all the time. Following these charts each and every day and every time a practice trade presents itself to jump into the middle of it. You've got to practice. That's what we are all about here is going through these charts, teaching you the fundamentals. Now you can add your own knowledge to it as you get better and better. You will have your own way of doing things, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But again, what do we say? 10 to 15 minutes a day, each and every day, I practice trade constantly. It is extremely important as you go along to always be looking for different ways to do things, better ways. The market is dynamic. Complexity theory teaches us that in dynamic type environments, we have to be ready, willing, and able to think out of the box and to adjust the way we play. Remember, our objective is to follow price movement accurately. That is what charting is all about. When people say, oh, I'm only interested in learning value investing. Well, who doesn't want to, you know, when you're out there real trading, when you get beyond what we do from practice trading into real trading, well, of course, everybody wants to buy something of proper value. But when you look at the S&P 500 and you see where it rotated over going up on the weekly chart back the week ending the 25th of January of this year, that is a great jumping in point for your practice trade. It's not a time to sell. It's a time to buy. But when the market peaked out, and started to roll over, you don't want to be buying at that point. You want to be selling. You want to be practicing a down trade on a type of inverse ETF like SH. And again, please take all the trainings that we have available at the website. We have a great one, inverse ETFs, how to make money when markets crash. That's a great one about learning how to train and practice trade with down markets using inverse ETFs. And of course, we've got, well, for you tonight, we have a special training that we put together for you dealing with backing away what we ask you to do every Wednesday to step back from the charts, just look at the weekly charts and see what the weekly charts are telling you. It's always good, and we particularly like to do that at the, in the middle of the week, in the middle of all the minutia. Step back, check out what's going on in the charts, and then help yourself make some important and informed decisions. But looking at those big charts, remember the big charts is where the big movement and the big money in your practice trades comes from. So very, very important. Now, let's talk about what's going on in these charts. On the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, they are down for the day. NASDAQ 100 down rather strongly. Bonds and gold are up. Bonds up the most for the day. So let's jump in first to the charts. What do we see happening? We didn't have a crossover going up at the end of this prior week, ending Friday the 20th of September. We have what appears to be forming into a bounce off the red signal line. Derivative oscillator still barely negative. We want to see that growing bigger, but we do have a lot of oscillation there from all the prior up movement. But And we see that we have a doji forming. A red doji means indecision, tending down. We do see the price percent oscillator, our main indicator, again, pushing away from that red signal line. That's very important on the weekly chart. We go to the two-day. What do we see going on there? Of course, Monday and Tuesday, the, the latest two-day candle ended at the close of the day on Tuesday. Nice, big, solid red down candle. No wick on the top, wick on the bottom showing strong down movement. We like that. My friends, we're waiting to see if this next candle is going to give us a crossover going down. We don't have a crossover. We don't have confirmed down movement. We want to see that happen soon. Hopefully that will. What does that open us up for? A practice trade on SH. What is SH? That is the inverse, the single inverse of the S&P 500. Now again, you don't have to practice trade that. You can just get out 
and wait for the S&P to bottom out and then get back into a practice trade when it goes up. But again, very important, I think, to practice both inverse and regular ETF trades. Very important to, to just get used to both of them. So we go from the two-day to the four-hour. And of course, that four-hour chart crossed over going down all the way back on the 16th. It really went sideways for a while and bumped up on the 19th and then rolled back over, heading down strongly on Friday the 20th. And then, of course, slid sideways Monday afternoon and Tuesday morning and then dropped off strong Tuesday afternoon. So heading down, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum, price percent oscillator heading down. We'll see if it when there's going to be enough strong enough movement and if to rotate that two-day chart back over. Now let's go to the NASDAQ 100 as depicted by the exchange-traded fund QQQ called the Qs, the Cubes whatever you might call it. I call it the Qs. What do we see going on there? Well, we have a bigger red top that's forming and a, a bigger candle. It's got some up movement, uh, more down movement. Price percent oscillators pushing away from the red signal line. Derivative oscillator is still negative. We go, and again, remember, we're still in a confirmed down move on the weekly. has been that way for a while. Go to the two-day chart. And again, we have a nice big down candle form with a big wick on the bottom. Strong down movement depicted. Price percent oscillator stroking down. Derivative oscillator losing downward, uh, losing upward momentum. Hasn't turned red yet. Getting closer to a crossover going down. Hopefully that will happen in the next candle. Now remember, it'll draw itself on both Wednesday and Thursday. That candle will not be complete until the close of the market on Thursday. So perhaps we'll have an opportunity to jump into a practice trade. Then we look at what happened over the course of the day down in the morning, strong down in the afternoon. Things really dropped over according to our Heiken Ashi candlesticks, price percent oscillator heading down strongly also. That's where we are on the cues. So we go back and I'll recap all this for you at the end. We go back now to the four, to the weekly chart. We go to TLT, 20 year bonds now. They were stronger trying to cross over yesterday, but that appears to be pulling back as we see a green candle that appears to be forming for the week up for the day, 1.21%. Have bonds bottomed out? That's possible. Derivative oscillator still gaining downward momentum at this point, but we do have a green up candle forming. Remember, only two days into a five-day candle. This latest two-day candle, though, is the second in a row, even bigger, stronger up movement. Of course, what are we waiting for? We want to see if indeed we have a crossover going up on this two-day chart sometime this week. Still a ways to go for that price percent oscillator across the red signal line, and that derivative oscillator still way negative. But again, two decent strong up candles. We go to the four-hour chart. What do we see there? It crossed over going up back on the 18th and has pretty much been going up pretty strong since then. So we'll continue to watch, see if indeed this two-day candle sometime this week might actually cross over going up. Well, not the two-day candle, but the price percent oscillator. Perhaps that will happen. We'll watch, see what there is to see there. Remember, weekly chart is and has been in a confirmed up movement. Lastly, we go to gold. Gold up for the day, 0.53%. We have a green, an open box green candle, which typically portends strong movement heading up. Gold is right parallel with that red signal line. Derivative oscillator is still negative. Price percent oscillator is positive on that weekly chart. Go to the two-day, it's still negative, but heading up a little bit. Derivative oscillator still negative, too. Second up candle, this latest up candle uh, for the two-day chart is a strong one, and we'll see just how much stronger the up movement gets and if it'll rotate over the price percent oscillator on this two-day chart. Lastly, we go to the four-hour chart. It crossed over going up back on the 17th and then had a bit of a pullback with that weird, we've talked about that since it happened, the weird candle back on the afternoon of Wednesday the 18th. 
down another day and a, half, a day or so and then started popping up since then. And of course, up decently for the day, 0.53%. So let's recap what we are waiting for. Basically, on all these charts, we see in gold that our weekly is in a confirmed up move and has been on the weekly chart. We're waiting to see if that two-day chart is going to cross over going up, giving us an opportunity to jump into a practice trade. Same with the 20-year bonds, TLT, if and when this two-day chart crosses over going up, weekly's already primed for strong up movement. Let's see if that happens and if we have a jumping in point there. It could fail. It could fail in gold too. We want to have indicator verified support with the crossover on the price percent oscillator. We look at stocks completely the opposite. On the Qs, we want it to cross over going down. PSQ is an exchange-traded fund that's an inverse fund that you can practice trade. PSQ. It is the short of the NASDAQ 100. Bingo. It moves in the opposite direction. Now, it is, of course, much less costly, but the way it is set up by the fund is to move at approximately the same percentage in the opposite direction of the underlying ETF, which is QQQ. It's the short. So we'll see if that actually does work out for us. And if we have a practice trade in that, that'll be when we have a crossover on the price percent oscillator going down. That can't happen till the close of the market on Thursday because it's a two-day candle takes all day Wednesday, all day Thursday. Then at the end of the day on Thursday, we might have an opportunity to jump into a down trade. I want you to practice that if it happens. Lastly, we look at the S&P 500, looking for the same thing, a crossover going down on that two-day chart since the weekly has been primed for down movement since we had that crossover going down back on the week ending the 9th of August. So again, that's where we are, folks. We want to just continue keeping our eye on the prize, paying attention to what is going on on these charts, what they are showing us. Remember, the charts are the key. The charts are the key. And the candles and the price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator, all these things are important. Don't forget the special training for those of you who are subscribers. It costs absolutely nothing. Go to chartingwealth.com, put in your name, email address. You will get our daily review four days a week, our comprehensive review and forecast once a week. Plus, you'll get all the special trainings that we put out on a daily basis. We love to hear from you. CW at chartingwealth.com is our email address. If you haven't purchased our book, we have an autographed copy waiting for you. Sent out several of them today. All you got to do is follow the link in the show notes to purchase the book. If you live overseas, email us, CW at chartingwealth.com. We will send you a link so you can purchase the book on PayPal. My friends, we so appreciate you. You got questions, problems, concerns, trainings you would like us to do. Oh, by the way, Patreon members doing a special training for you, working on it today, uh, setting up the graphics for it or we'll record it uh, over this week. It's a surprising key to success, cutting losses. It's a, a training that I think you're just going to love, going to be going out to the Patreon members Appreciate all their help and support. Of course, it is expensive putting all this stuff out for you on a daily basis. Bandwidth, the texting service we have, and all the other stuff. We so appreciate the support from those members. God bless, my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.